Continuing on the theme of AI-related connectivity, let's talk about AI gateways. A really common question we get is, why do I need an AI gateway? And maybe I'll just build one myself or use my existing API gateway for that functionality. So let's examine the top five use cases we see in customers adopting an AI gateway. The first one involves credential management. So without an AI gateway, a very common pattern you see is I'll create a key here in my, in my LLM provider, and then I'll go ahead and take that key and distribute it to the application teams, the teams writing agents, and anyone maybe that they're using an Agentic IDE and they need an API key there as well, and you can distribute it in all those locations. Functionally, this works. The problem is when any one of these developers that seems that has seen that key maybe leaves the company or actually accidentally checks it into a public GitHub repository, the blast radius of that is this entire infrastructure, right, including your account in the ALM provider. One thing that an AI gateway helps out with immediately is that I can have safe and secure storage for my API keys that only my AI gateway has access to. The AI gateway then can, if we want, go ahead and issue individual keys for specific use cases, uh, for specific user groups. Or I can also integrate with existing authentication uh, mechanisms I have in my organization. Like if an agent is presenting a JOT, I can use that and map it to the API key I'm providing to the provider. This is critical just in terms of the blast radius uh, limitation of like, hey, a key is exfiltrated uh, or someone has hacked a certain piece of code and gained access to a certain piece of code. I know exactly how to contain that threat. And by containing it, I'm not impacting any of the use cases I have for that LLM provider. I would say that credential management also plays a key role in the other use cases we're about to talk about now. So let's talk about rate limiting. Why is rate limiting important? So maybe you've already seen this in your existing applications uh, where let's say you have a, this app is sending you know, five requests with a, uh, a token size of let's just say 20K tokens, right? And over here, uh, this uh, IDE is sending 20 requests with a token size, uh, like a 45K token window, like every minute or so, right? Uh, now you end up with turning an agent on and the agent goes bananas. And all of a sudden it sends, you know, 20,000 requests and, and a massive uh, context window that it's dumping in. And it's got like a million tokens, let's say, uh, just in a very short period of time, like in less than a minute. Uh, now, in that scenario, what's going to happen is the LM provider is going to rate limit not only based on request count, but also by token count. So those are both variables in, in that uh, equation and evaluation. And when you get shut off, you're going to get shut off, not just for the use case that's abusing it, but account wide, and you're going to get a back off. That means maybe this agent, I'm just testing around or it's an evaluation, but I've brought my entire account down and that's all API keys for that account across all the other use cases. It's impacting developers, it's impacting my production apps that may be customer facing as well. We have to find a better way to deal with this problem. And the answer is with an AI gateway to actually support rate limiting and token weight and rate limiting in particular directly in the gateway. And that means when I have these, this same traffic here, where I'm coming over and this is the bad actor. I have our IDE friends over here. This agent, since it's interacting with the AI gateway first, the AI gateway can shut off that agent directly while allowing traffic from all other consumers to continue. That means I have no production or service interruptions from the app or the IDE, and the agent gets really gentle back pressure and it gets turned off for a period of time and then gets opened up again. It'll be very obvious to that team that they're getting rate limited locally, and then they can fix that problem and address it and come back online. Or maybe it was a periodic uh, or ephemeral issue with sent flooding a bunch of traffic, and as soon as they exceed the rate limiting window, then they'll come back online. But the key thing in any gateway and why API gateways, traditional API gateways are not uh, sufficient to handle this requirement is you need both request rate limiting, but also token weighted rate limiting. So I can compute the amount of tokens that are allowed given a certain time window in seconds, minutes, hours, or days. All right, use case number three, usage reporting. So maybe this is familiar to you as you're consuming more and more of uh, provider services end of the day, you get a nice bill from your, your LLM provider, and it's a million dollars, okay? Okay, who is actually spending that money, okay? 
you may be lucky enough to have multiple API keys, so you get maybe some subdivision of that. But it, again, if you're sharing API keys across the clients that are using it, then you're gonna, that's going to get washed out. More importantly, you're not going to have the very specific details of the identities, uh, the groups that are consuming it, the model and the provider used in that internal detail of how you're actually going to show chargeback or showback to the teams consuming. So what we want is the ability that we'll get the same million dollar bill over here, okay? Um, but in this scenario, every request that's going through the AI gateway is actually earmarked or watermarked with the client actually consuming it. That's how we're doing rate limiting and that's why we implement uh, credential management in this layer as well. Which means that when I get this $1 million bill, the access logging and reporting here can actually tell me that it, this uh, particular app is actually responsible for 50K and this IDE is worth is responsible for 50k or and like you know the, it'll, the token count uh, it'll report the token counts and you can extrapolate the the value there and then our, our friend the agent that was acting up in terms of rate limiting their token uh, contribution was around 900k right uh, this is a very very key attribute to like once you're trying to justify that AI budget and who's consuming you're trying to even if you're not charging back those teams you're trying to show who's consuming uh, consumption reporting in the gateway is a key feature you certainly don't want to, you don't have the right details in a traditional API management solution or API gateway to basically track providers and clients and token counts uh, to, to show that chargeback. Uh, but then also you won't have the granularity to, to isolate it to given teams. All right, number four, guardrails. So for guardrails, what we want to protect against is uh, a number of things. The request that's going in this can be a hijack request, um, it could be a phishing prompt, um, it, it can be anything. This is your attack surface area of what's going in via natural language prompt. And they're going to be a common attack vectors that you're going to want to protect against. Certain prompts that if they contain keywords or they're structured in a certain way, you always want to prevent. Or perhaps you want to append a system prompt to every, uh, every request that goes through. Uh, so you can use some semantic guardrails there in line with the request. Likewise, even if it wasn't a malicious request, on the response path, I always have a, 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 a danger here of data exfiltration, right? So if I'm asking a, a very innocent question that's not a phishing attack or, uh, or trying to be a Trojan horse, I still might get back some customer data, account information, social security number, this type of thing that I don't want to expose to, uh, to clients. And in that case, I have no way of protecting against either of these. The only thing I can rely on is the actual LLM providers moderation services, which are definitely Definitely valuable, but on the request path, I'm never limited. Like any data can uh, can go all the way to the, the LLM provider here. So that's actually leaving my network um, and is out on like open internet and available to the provider. Um, and I might not want that data even escaping my network, right? Like uh, likewise, there could be very specific requirements I have where maybe the obvious things like credit card numbers and social security numbers you can pattern match on those, and the provider services can filter those. But what if I have very unique constraints of what I consider PII for my customer base, or I have intellectual property uh, that I don't want to escape my network. I don't want developers accidentally like putting in key bits of code um, or other IP materials that actually might throw to an LLM provider that I need to be able to instrument for advanced uh, guardrails as well. So let's look at how an API uh, or an AI gateway solves for that. In the AI gateway, you actually have three controls available. So you have basic guardrails. And what basic guardrails do is the first use case I said, that acting directly on the prompt and the response, it can introspect the request, it can identify keywords, identify patterns, and, and reject those and reject that request to not allow it to flow through to the upstream LLM provider. Likewise, on the response path, it can inspect the data and it can either reject that outright or it can mask that data as it comes back to the client. The key value there is that I don't have to implement in all of the client apps, this, these guardrails. I have a centralized point of control. This becomes very important if after going to production, you discover that some key data is being exfiltrated, all right, or you're open to some attack vector. What is the fastest path to remediating that exposure? And it's not rolling out new updates to all the apps you've deployed, and it's not working with your upstream LLM provider to add that to their moderation endpoint. That's actually implementing that in the AI gateway and getting it pushed to production in minutes. The next feature I'll mention is moderation endpoint integration. So again, this is a key feature that the upstream LLM providers all offer. 
Uh, but why would I want to wait necessarily for the full request to go to the LLM and then catch that in the processing path? What I really want to do is inside my network, basically contact the moderation point. And if there's any problem with that request, I want that to actually be cut off in my network and not go farther downstream, right? A key principle here is trying to eliminate any threats or any potential data exfiltration as soon as you can detect it. And this is a key uh, aspect of that. And then finally, we support what we call advanced guardrails. And really what that is, as an example, is if you wanted to train a small language model, maybe you take like an 8 billion parameter model and you fine tune it with maybe 500 examples of various types of, of, of data that you don't want uh, to see in a request or different types of prompts that you don't want to see, that can be very, very useful to execute in line in the request path as more of a semantic guardrail. So you're not even matching on specific data patterns or data signatures. You're, at, you're doing semantic controls of, is this suggestive of this? Or is this like these other things? And that can be done with a small language model that can be integrated directly with the AI gateway. The last point I want to make is around abstraction. So in this case, we have a, a individual apps, agents, and IDEs going directly against the LLM provider. The impact of that means that they are binding to the very specific API of that provider. And also, they are actually, if you look behind the scenes, most customers, while they may be consuming um, the public endpoint, the generalized you know, endpoint for OpenAI, for example, uh, that we all use uh, when, when we use it. Um, but it's quite likely for sensitive information or for their enterprise use cases, you're consuming a private endpoint there. So you've isolated that LLM in uh, specific infrastructure for your company, and you need to access that endpoint or a specific model. And in that scenario, now the app is going to go to that specific endpoint. There are definitely cases where there can be endpoint availability issues there for a very specific endpoint where it's unavailable for a certain period of time. Now, in that case, if that's tied to a production experience, so like a chat bot uh, or any customer facing functionality, then that customer channel is down in that period. Uh, another potential exposure here is if you get rate limited in a given model, uh, or even availability of a given model um, is, is down, then you might want to fall back or fail over to another model. But it is very hard to instrument for this. You actually have to build that logic directly into each application agent, and, and you're hoping your IDE supports it that you're using up here. But with an AI gateway, we can do that seamlessly. If a given endpoint, private endpoint, is down, the LLM will seamlessly fall over based on your configuration to a backup endpoint. And this can cascade down to multiple endpoints, multiple models, and even multiple providers. When we talk about abstraction, if your AI gateway supports a canonical API, as we do in Agent Gateway, all of your clients can just talk OpenAI's API, and that can be mapped to any provider underneath the cover, whether that's Claude or Vertex or Bedrock or OpenAI itself. Um, it can scale to all of these models while presenting a single canonical and consistent API to the consumers, which makes it much easier as you start to exchange models, whether it's hosted providers or you're starting to run Llama or another model, open source model internally, you still don't impact the consumers of that because you're keeping that API abstraction the same. So hopefully this was, was useful in terms of discussing the key use cases and the key value we see with customers in adopting an AI gateway and gives you a good idea of how daunting this task is if you were going to embark on the path of implementing it on your own. Check out Agent Gateway today.